totally worth it for a tech enthusiast. Still feels futuristic. One of the very few phones that I keep wanting to jump back to. Every time I used it, made me smile. That's the best phone I've ever owned. Those are responses to a tweet I posted asking Galaxy Fold owners for their feedback about the Fold. Why did I read each one on a different device, like some kind of overworked Starfleet captain? Well, to make the point that while each of these is wonderful and competent in its own right, none of them have changed the way I use my phone or altered my perception of what a phone can be. The Galaxy Fold has. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is Into the Fold, Mr. Mobile's monthly series covering life on a folding screen. Episode three, the Samsung Galaxy Fold long-term review. Some background on this particular Fold. I bought it on December 31st for the dual purposes of launching this series and also making sure my friend Nirav wasn't the only guy at the New Year's Eve party with a folding phone. Since then, the Fold has been my everyday phone. It took me through the CES 2020 trade show. It kept me occupied while I was stuck in a hospital bed with the plague I got at CES 2020. And over the past few months of sheltering in place, it's contributed to the delay of my iPad Pro review. Because when you have a folding tablet in your pocket all the time, you find you don't reach for your iPad nearly as often. In fact, that's my usual elevator pitch when people ask me about the Fold. It's a phone when you need it and a tablet when you want it. But tablet is kind of a dirty word in the Android space. In fact, I remember some good analysis when the Fold came out asking, why do we want a phone that turns into an Android tablet? Didn't the market sort of decide that Android tablets aren't very good? Well, it took owning the Fold, instead of just borrowing a review sample for a few weeks, for me to finally answer that question for myself. See, Samsung always advertises the extreme multitasking capabilities, like running multiple apps at once. And, you know, that does come in handy for things like taking notes while watching a video. But really, that's a rarity in my usage. For me, it's about using my regular apps, usually one at a time, and that added physical space giving me a sense of, well, tell them, General Chang. We need breathing room. Earth, Hitler, 1938. I beg your pardon. I'll put it this way. In the best tradition of cliched reviewer parlor tricks, I wrote some of this review on my Galaxy Fold. Now, could I have done that on an iPhone 11 Pro Max or a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus? Absolutely. In fact, I once edited a whole video on the latter. But as big as those so-called phablet screens are, they still feel more confining, more limiting to me than this vast 7.3-inch canvas. When I carry the Fold, I feel like it's finally realized the dream of those mid-2000s ultra-mobile PCs that LGR sometimes covers, which promised the functionality of a laptop in a unit that fits in a cargo pocket. I use the Fold's home screen more like a mobile PC than any of my other Android phones. I condensed all the apps I usually keep in folders across both home screens into two columns for easy access, which allowed me to use the entirety of screen two for the calendar widget. And when it's time for a trade show, I drop an email widget next to Todoist, so I don't even have to open an app to see what's going on. I just open the phone, and there it is. I'm using Nova Launcher, by the way, with the Line X icon pack. It's a little buggy on the outer display. I have to reset my wallpaper after I reboot. And I do wish I could use gestures, but otherwise, I prefer it to Samsung's One UI. Oh, and as for responsiveness, the Fold feels as snappy as it did the day I bought it. Now, one thing quarantine has taught me is that the Fold is a device that really shines when you're on the road all the time. It is most useful in the back of taxi cabs, on airplanes, and in hotel rooms on quick overnights when you just can't be bothered to lug an iPad along. The big battery is a big part of that. Even though I've loaded it down with five months of accumulated random apps at this point, and even though now that it's summer I spend most days with the brightness cranked up to max, it still lasts me a full day of really heavy use. Now, before I jump into the negatives, and there are a few, let me toss a little love to the sponsor that saved me from shattering this phone. I've had this dbrand skin on my Galaxy Fold almost since the very first day, which is good because I take the Bob Ross approach to handling my phones. Shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Yeah, I've dropped the Fold a bunch of times, open, closed. The worst one being when I accidentally spiked it into the side of my coffee table. The table still has the scarf, and so does the D-Brand skin. 
but the fold is still safe. And if you want to restore some of the vibrance of Samsung's canceled colorways, RIP Martian Green, dbrand has all the playful paint jobs you could want. Uh, this Star Trek sticker is not a dbrand item. Sorry, stay tuned to the end for that. Skin your own phone, computer, or console at this link. And thanks to dbrand for sponsoring this video. Of course, some parts of aging can't be helped by skin care. As I look back on my first unboxing of my Fold, I'm reminded that its hinge is no longer as snappy as it once was. In fact, one of the most 2019 things I've ever read was XDA's Max Weinbach asking Twitter if he should take his Fold into Samsung to get its hinge tightened. <laughs> I haven't had that service, so it doesn't feel as satisfying as it once did, nor does it sit perfectly flush on a tabletop, which is annoying. Also, listen to this. Look, I know these things are hard to build, but we didn't let Motorola off the hook, so Samsung doesn't get any slack either. A $2,000 phone should not squeak when you squeeze it. Speaking of Motorola, I do find it strange that Samsung didn't implement a similar folding methodology to curtail this huge crease running down the middle of the screen. I mean, the Razer has its creases too, but to me, it just somehow doesn't look as cheap as the one that bisects the fold. Other than that, folks, it's the same old stuff. The outside screen needs to be bigger, the inside screen has a pronounced smearing issue when scrolling in dark interfaces, and Instagram is still an absolute mess on these unconventional aspect ratios. Also, while the cameras are still plenty good, all six of them, they are starting to show their age a bit as manufacturers really start honing color science and low light performance in 2020. Conceivably, they could be improved with software updates, but while Samsung has kept the Fold reasonably up to date, there's an expectation that when you drop this much money on a phone, you'll get major platform updates at the same time as flagships that cost half as much. And that just hasn't always happened. If you want to know the biggest problem with the Fold, it's one it inherited from its April 2019 progenitor, a reputation for being very fragile. That first Fold's defective design has already been covered extensively, so I'll link to my old videos rather than retread that ground. But it truly is unfortunate that to this day, the second question people ask me when they see me using this after, OMG, is that the Samsung folding phone? Is, it's really fragile, right? Because while yes, my screen does bear the marks of constant usage with scratches that run a little deeper and certainly arose more easily than they would have on a glass screen, like the crease, you just don't notice them when you're using the phone. And when you snap it shut after finishing your text or tweet, that soft display is protected. I'm not saying there haven't been display failures reported. Max swapped his out due to something finding its way under the panel, and the occasional bad pixel blotch still shows up on Reddit. But between my experience and those of the people I asked at the top of the video, the great Galaxy Fold display failure apocalypse that many of us expected just hasn't come to pass. There's even a contractor out there who's used one for a while. Doesn't have any problems. Now, does that mean I can recommend the Fold without hesitation? No. It's a nearly $2,000 smartphone with no dust or water resistance, and it's a first-generation product on top of that. I can't in good conscience recommend it for most people. But maybe the real benefit to a long-term review isn't so much deciding if you should buy this now year-old phone, so much as it is to help decide if Samsung's next foldable is something you should consider. Given how much I love the Fold despite its faults, and how much progress we've already seen from Samsung in the hinge and display improvements on the Galaxy Z Flip, well, to quote fellow reviewer Flossie Carter, it's a major, major, major go. He told me I had to use three majors for this thing. And you know what? He's right. Check out Flossie's unboxing to see everything the Galaxy Fold comes with and for his awesome commentary, Hey White Shoes. And be sure to check out the other episodes of Into the Fold as well. I'm doing one per month, and I'd love it if you subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the next one. And that promised tip for fellow Trekkies, the Okudagram sticker on my Fold was a freebie sent to me by Bye Bye Robot, as was the beautiful artwork on my bedroom wall. The link is in the description. This review was based on a retail Galaxy Fold purchased by Mr. Mobile. Samsung received no preview of this content and was not given the opportunity to approve or modify the copy prior to publication. I work for you, not the manufacturers. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe at home if you can, but in spirit, as always, stay mobile, my friends.